Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of RSA Commerce 2023. I'm John Furrier, with Dave Vellante. Four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're in Broadcast Alley where the top publications are here in the security industry that have been known and covering all the best angles. Of course, Silicon Angle and theCUBE is here. And this is our wrap up of day two. We're going to bring the insights and try to wrap up kind of the, our observations, analysis, commentary, um, the big news, the keynotes, and all that's happening in the security industry. And Sarb Jeet Joel is with us. He's an influencer, uh, part of the Cube team, uh, always coming on as a guest analyst uh, on his own business. Sarb Jeet, good to see you. Thanks for coming good on. Good to see you, John. Yeah, good to okay. see you, John. So we have, I mean, we're on Sarb the <laughs> Good to see you too, John. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen you all day. <laughs> Just coming, he's always the name if you want. So Sarb Jeet, you and I were on the floor. We, we checked out the Palo Alto Networks, Tenable, all the top booths. It's packed. Um, yeah, floor's it's, unbelievable. Floor's I mean, on it really fire. Is. Um, action is popping here. Day two, obviously, yesterday was kind of day one officially, but yeah. the keynotes were at the end. It was a kind of a kickoff day. This is kind of day one, I call it the day one. They said it was day zero. Today is full throttle. What are you seeing? Yeah, actually, it was super busy when I came around 11 o'clock. Uh, there's so many vendors, like we know that, like the security is one of those areas where the number of vendors is like, there's a long sort of sprawl. So four thousand plus, I'm hearing, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, and they have they have divided like normally they do like on on, on the south and and the money's uh, flowing and the here, west side, right? So those two halls and in between the those few sort of cube, cubes you can call it. It's or like the, wallpaper, the, the, yeah, <laughs> right? The All few, those few, small startups, few vendors in between, yeah. uh, they are benefiting from it. From from you know it. that not used used to not be the case. It used to be empty in between north and south, and now it's just full. That wasn't connected no, no, before. For, that was not connected. Only one little tunnel on the other side. Now they blew it up open. For the last two right. two times I was here, like it was connected. Uh, but but there were vendors. There, there were okay. There were vendors, right. and FBI. I saw FBI and 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 NSA there as well. So, like, there there's, there are country specific you know areas. Spain is there, big with big presence. Well, let's get in. We don't have a lot of time. I want to get into the media. Yeah, sure, you guys good. are the analysts. I'll ask the question. Yeah. What do you think is the most important story that you've seen here in day day two, Dave, and start to. I mean, for me, it's yeah. like the more things change, the more things stay the same. Um, the, the one big difference is obviously generative AI, but nobody has been able to confirm when you talk to you know, the, the threat intelligence folks, at whether it's Mandiant or Unit 42 from Palo Alto or anybody, there's no clear evidence that generative AI, large language models have been, you know, you think that, that there's clear signatures in recent hacks. And we know what's happening. We know when you, you, people on the dark web, they're saying they're talking about it, what's best practice, how are you using it, but there's no clear evidence in the signature yet. Yet. Yet, yet. yet is the operative yet. word. What's your, what's your thoughts on the most important Yeah, I analysis? think yet, I, that's a key word right there. Like, for how long we have chat GPT out? Like, a couple of months, right? 150 <laughs> days, yeah, maybe. So, yeah, so the, the, the bad guys, are, they got their hands on when everybody else got their hands on, right? So they didn't get the, their hands on to it like before, like two months ago. So they will catch on. And mm -hmm. also actually I was thinking um, when I was coming here, like I think the bad guys were very busy with crypto side. Like that was their low hanging fruit. They were hacking. You mean covering their tracks? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, like will you rather go for big crypto money or, or these small little like, you know, deals that we're hacking a school district or something, right? So, um, I think as crypto winds down, which I think it will, uh, US is after it, you know, and so well, many other know, countries. We saw the Coinbase news. Um, crypto is not going to go down. We know that. Crypto okay, well, I am, I'm in the other you're camp. saying You're saying crypto's dead. Not dead, but it will gradually sort of go down. Um, even the stable coins are okay, suffering. Let me, let me ask you a different question. Will, will Bitcoin, 10 years from now, have a larger or smaller market cap? Smaller. Yeah, I would, I'll, here, what do you want to bet? If I'm still <laughs> around, we'll bet the nice dinner. Nice dinner, yeah, and well, uh, if that's The good. loser has to pay in crypto. Yeah, but, but, but I also spoke to a few people here. Like, I, I, I was of the view that w we will use our relational data like uh, you can call it on threat intelligence and all kinds of data is sitting in relational databases as well, as well as it's sitting in our logs. But, but I am learning that the chat GPT-like models are not very good with relational databases. 
they are good with the conversational sort of uh, text, if you will, and or images, and or, you know, Yeah, audio. but that's ChatGPT. Yeah. Right? There's going to be other foundation models True. that perhaps, you know, are going to be able to solve that. Yeah, yeah. But, but also, I, I but also, but also ChatGPT is only one form. There was hackers, we had some guests on earlier, I asked the question, uh, and there was other, yeah. there's other machine learning and AI yeah. prior to this. Yes. So the hackers probably had their hands on it at least six to eight months earlier. At least some of the primitives on the foundation. You heard what models. I said to Wendy Whitmore, I said AI was invented in November 2022. <laughs> no, no, actually it has been there for a long time. Of course, I'm teasing. Of course, right? <laughs> and then the, and the, these, the, this, this gang which came from the University of Toronto, they have been working on that for a long time and Google research has been working on for like years, if not decades. So AI is not a new thing and, and Amazon has been using AI to throw products at us for, you know, Almost two decades. Well, I think I, I think I'd like to get your thoughts on because one of the things we've been talking about on the cube, and I've been interviewing on my my one on ones, Dave, asking the question, what's going to be disrupted? This is a this is a show that I won't say is old, but it's been around for a while. Supercomputing's been around since 1988, but I think there's going to be a handful of these vendors out there that won't be around in a couple of years. You got to get it right here. I mean, you got to be on the right side of history. Get vendor consolidation for the supplier side. So we heard no that. No question, yeah. Okay, spending's down as you reported in your breaking analysis. And just some technology architectures are, might be wrong. I mean, we just had Cribble on, they're doing a deal with CrowdStrike. They're the best data connector in the planet right now. You know, they're eating Splunk's lunch. Well. On XDR, at least CrowdStrike's SDR package. Yeah. I, I, inertia is a tough thing to move, but yeah. yeah. I mean, so I what think are, there what is are the signs coming. that? What are the signs that people aren't going to make it? I think signs are this: that if you're still singing the same song what you sang like five years back, then you're dead, right? So you have to move with the time. Even if you don't have the products in that bucket yet, you have to show the market that we are working on it, or we have this point of view about AI, about ML, about. Also, also, all sort of intelligence and, and newer, newer paradigms, right? Yeah. The newer kind of database, vector databases are coming into the play, um, like how you will leverage that for security in this case, right? And or a transactional, you know, like a business transaction. Well, you know, the, the narrative right now is you guys, Silicon Valley, growth capital is dried up, right? And so, yeah. you're saying, not, not true. Well, but the numbers show that, well, I mean, that, that, a, that a, you know, C, C rounds are down. No, it, like, no it's not way gratuitous down. drinking from the trough. It's still funding, good funding. For no, but I'm just saying, for yeah. growth capital, for yeah. you know, Series C yeah, is, is way yeah. down, and, and money shifting to Series Seed and, and, and early stage. Okay, here's my, my, my question to you guys is, will we see a transition? Because in the last five, six years, it's been a ton of funding into cybersecurity companies. You saw it. And, 2020, yeah. 2021. Is that now going to shift to other areas like AI? You've been saying crypto's shifting, the developers I, I think, all run into AI. I think the okay, AI. Okay, and, the, and then let me just finish this up. And then will it come back in, in the form of AI for cyber? And is that going to be the disruptive to answer yeah. your question? Yeah, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. So I'll start with the first yes. Um, the startups are going to get funded out of the gate. If any, has anyone has any pedigree in security? A VC in Silicon Valley and around the world should seed finance that person. Seed capital is not a problem. It's the growth capital, as you point out, so I agree with you on that. That's going to basically, as Michael Dell says, the rain will wash away some of the dirt on the street. So some stars are going to die because of it. And so that's going to happen there. Silicon Valley growth equation is going to come down to the alpha engineers who will use data to either be a pure play data element in some sort of new stack that's emerging. You see a structural change in like just foundation models. You have platform, cloud platforms, you got tools, you got um, uh, apps. You get, so the, a stack is forming in the, in the AI side. So they'll either play as a supplier in that or use AI to refactor something in cyber. So that's, that's an and equation. So they'll either be a supplier to cyber and then someone might use data in cyber to refactor either an incumbent, slow moving, um, large market opportunity and take down a big whale here. So I think you know, there'll be whale hunting going on for startups looking at the big incumbent slow players that they'll be more faster. So I think there'll be cybersecurity aspect there, absolutely, and, and you'll see the platforms get bigger. I think the big players cannot be taken down because they're part of the ecosystem. The, the medium sized, like the second tier players, they are in danger. Yeah, the, the big players. 
like who's a big player? Big players are like Google. Oh yeah, they, 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 they'll never they, get they taken They have Manian. Like on Microsoft has good well, security you know, portfolio. Tenable's a big player. They're a whale. Yeah. yeah. Palo Alto Network's a whale. But yeah, yeah. Palo Alto Strike's a whale. Yeah, Palo Alto Network Splunk's is. Splunk's a whale technically. <laughs> yeah, I think. So I mean, Splunk. I think all, has, I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, I is take them in a all I'm saying, is I'm not saying that Palo Alto will be taken out by a startup. I'm just yeah. saying it's possible that a, a, a innovative entrepreneurial team could put together a killer product with AI that changes the value proposition that will eat away and ultimately be put to put down a whale. But but in the bad market, or the whale will buy them out and take it over. But in the bad market, when money is expensive, the M and A goes high uh, high up, and even the even the the good companies on which are smaller startups, right? They want to be acquired. Yeah. They don't want to go public because that that road is so long. I mean, that's yeah. look at basically virtually every Israeli company in this space, where they're the, some of the most innovative problem solvers in the world. They all end up getting acquired. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, you look at the guys at Aguasio, right? You remember that? We're going to take over. And they used to, we used to challenge them on that. Of course, they end up getting acquired because who bought them? I forget. Israeli, <laughs> Israeli, okay, by the way, Israelis do security right. like nobody else does in, in Yeah, because they were born with security. <laughs> it's in their DNA it's yeah, from day one. I actually, I, when I was working at AMC. McKinsey they, bought Aguasio. <laughs> with Gilead right, interesting, so there's a, there's a case of McKinsey transitioning into yeah. more of a software Accenture's company. Accenture's doing some acquisitions too. Sorry to interrupt. So, so the no. M&A, Dave, you pointed this out, I highlighted on my post, but you pointed out in your breaking analysis, there are a lot of emerging companies today that's solving these new challenges, and they're going to be hot targets. So, I expect that in the next 24 months, and in, in the first 12 months leading up to the 24 months, will be a massive M&A activity. Because uh, no, no whale's going to let some startup take them down. They probably know that they're on the wrong side of history relative yes. to their you know, slow position or their, their girth. And I think they will make a move to try to figure it out. But I think this is where the leadership will make a huge difference, right? So some leaders see that as a, as a these, these new vendors are threat and then they bring them quickly and, and sort of create a narrative around that, but some, they just sit there and wait. This is the classic CUBE conversation we've had, Dave, so many times, organic versus acquisition. You know, do you grow organically or do you go outside? I tell you, I'm looking at the survey data right now, okay? So you got Symantec, which now owned by Broadcom, doesn't have a lot of momentum, but it's Broadcom, so you know they're sort of doing their integration yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, that, that's a PE play, and uh, so I don't count them out. Mm. Um, well, we'll see. BlackBerry, of course, pivoted, but the, you know, the traditional momentum's of ArcSight, which is now owned by Micros, Microfocus, SonicWall, Trellix, which is used to be McAfee, and, and, uh, and FireEye. IBM, their security business doesn't seem to have a lot of momentum, even though they're big, SecureWorks, RSA. Trend Micro, Checkpoint, these are all the ones that are sort of in the red in terms of spending momentum, yeah. right? And you, and you flip that, there's a lot of folks in the green, mm -hmm. you know, CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Okta, Microsoft obviously, CyberArk, yeah. SailPoint, Illumio, Cloudflare, yeah. Datadog, spending momentum, Palo Alto, th this is, Fortinet, companies, that's where all the momentum these is. These are companies, according to my sources, that are telling me, I, there was two companies on there, I won't say their names, but um, you mentioned them, you don't have to say them again. Can people can look at the tape. Two of those companies have spending slowdown for your data. Also are going back to their customer base with an inferior product and charging more, okay? So this is what's happening. They're on a death spiral, okay? They're trying to pimp up their numbers so they can get bought <coughs> out by private equity. So they got to charge more for, for a customer base that doesn't want their product. When you have alternative products on the market that cost less and perform better. So this is a classic market transition death spiral. And so you're going to watch when spending slowdown or what we call deceleration, that's a sign of, 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 a, of an implosion. Okay, what, what, what do what we call it, a radical unassembly? <coughs> what did Mux call it? What did Mux call it? A, uh, <laughs> Strategic <laughs> when, when SpaceX blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid. <laughs> Unassemble. <laughs> a, a rapid oh, plan deceleration or something? <laughs> or or, or di dis disaggregation? Or okay, Brendan, okay. we can help us out. Real quick, okay. <laughs> we, can't, rapid. We, we can't talk about these things in the absence of cloud. So today, two cloud players earnings today. Microsoft. Yeah, what's out? Okay, Microsoft uh, grew at 27%. 20, uh, it, it actually fell to 27% growth from 31. 
Okay, so 27. Year. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. I thought I thought it would be like. Well, like and and who else standard. announced? It was uh, the, okay, Google. The, the, it was what, called what a what rapid. Was it was called a rapid unscheduled disassembly. That is the term that Elon Musk PR team used. But still, SpaceX. So you're talking. Um, you're talking Azure. Azure actually grew at 27 percent. 27. It, it fell and from 31. Was, and what, what was let, Google? Let, let's take a look at the Google so, one. So remember, you remember while you're looking that up. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is, so Google will report uh, Google uh, uh, Cloud, but not GCP. Yeah. And then they'll make statements about GCP, and, and they used to say GCP grew, you know, significantly more than Google Cloud. So right. Google, guys, let's we got to wrap go. it up right there. Yeah. We got a clock, uh, five o'clock, hard stop. Um, so you, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Oh, Dave. bummer. Google, okay. Google did actually a little lower. What thing. was the number? Uh, it was uh, 7.45 billion versus 7.49. So 7 it was lower 49 than what 7.45? Versus 7.49. Yeah, 30 seconds. It's about finish flat. That, finish okay, that point. so you're basically flat. Bottom line, third, last 30 seconds, what do you got? So, listen, cloud decelerating growth, and, and word is Amazon's going to come in next quarter around 10% people are forecasting, but as we talked about, they're going to customers being proactive, locking in the long-term value. Yeah. That's their play. And, yeah. and you see the same for security. I think cloud, cloud is slowing down, but it's, it's, it's faster, still faster than on-prem, and um, the, the security, it changes the security posture, and a lot of companies which used to provide on-prem security, uh, yeah. they need to rethink All right, that's models. day two. We are here in the broadcast alley. The top publications come here. Of course, we're the last ones. We're going to go to the last second. Everyone else has left early to go to happy hour, <laughs> not the cube. We will do whatever it takes to get that story. Check our podcast out. Check out the breaking analysis. We'll go to the last second possible to get the stories to bring to you. Keep watching theCUBE. We'll be back tomorrow for day three. Thanks for watching.